The Marvel Universe is brimming with marvelous characters, but it's not only about cloaks and daggers. One recurring theme in the universe is clones who play both Saint and the Deplorable here. These clones are eminent and often fan up the plot with their unique abilities and skills that set them apart. While few from the lot wane into anonymity, a handful stand out as serious threats, waiting to break the mold and become memorable figures in their own right. These characters range from lethal assassins to indomitable creatures, proving to be a daunting match for both heroes and villains. Their powers aren't just impressive, they're outright dangerous and formidable. Today, we're going to check out the 10 most dangerous clones in the Marvel's comics and uncover what makes these doppelgangers so uniquely intimidating. So, gear up and let's take a deep dive into the clone zone of the Marvel Universe, where the photocopies are as menacing as the originals. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please Please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you, and let's begin. Madeline Pryor Madeline Pryor was a mirror image of the supposedly deceased Jean Grey, but turned out to be not another face in the crowd. Disclosed in the Uncanny X-Men Volume 1, number 241, Pryor was more than just a Jean lookalike. She was a clone crafted by the genius Jean scientist Mr. Sinister. But Madeline was lifeless until the Dark Phoenix's demise sparked life into her along with Jean's memories. Sinister, smelling a lifetime opportunity, began his plan in full throttle to pair the clone with our X-Man, Scott Summers, aka Cyclops, and make the ultimate mutant offspring. But when the real Jean turns up alive, Scott leaves Madeline and baby Christopher hanging to be with the real deal. Not one to sulk, Madeline dances with Demon Sim and cuts a deal with him, arising as the Goblin Queen, a villain always sold short. And since Madeline was a clone of the Go of the X-Men universe, how could she be a letdown in the superpowers department? She can speed through space like nobody's business. Telekinesis, telepathy, mind control, body possession, mental manipulation, crafting illusions, causing paralysis, erasing memories, everything Jean Grey could do, and a little more. She can reshape someone's personality or put them in a mind freeze, and can also transfer her mind and powers to a new body if a situation arises. With her incredible gift of psychic surgery, she has the power to erase someone's memories and heal their mental trauma. And if the list of Jean's powers isn't long enough already, she can also create a telepathic connection between people, allowing them to communicate with each other through their minds. Because of her deal with the demon Sim, Madeline dabbled a little in dark magic too. She could summon people from the dead, locate spirits, heal wounds. She was a woman calling the shots. Benjamin Riley. Benjamin Riley, a clone of Spider-Man, aka Peter Parker, carved his own path as the Scarlet Spider. He was created by Miles Warren, also known as the Jackal, who was out to stick it to Spider-Man for Gwen Stacy's death. The first altercation between Ben and Parker ended with both the Jackal and Ben supposedly gone for good. But Ben survived and went MIA for five years wrestling with his clone identity crisis, and decided to call himself Ben Riley, a mix of his Uncle Ben's first name and Aunt May's maiden name. But Ben returned and, after patching things up with Peter, teamed up with him as the Scarlet Spider. However, Seward Trainer, a genetics expert, stirred up another chaos in Ben's and Peter's life when he disclosed that Peter was the clone, not Ben. This left Peter reeling and Ben in shock. Hence, Peter decided to let go of the suit and Ben, feeling he owed it to Uncle Ben, donned the Spidey suit again, taking up the mantle. Things got messy when Ben faced off with Norman Osborn, the Green Goblin. He got impaled and found out that the whole Peter thing being the clone and not Ben was nothing but a ruse. But that wasn't the end for Ben because he was resurrected by Miles Warren, who used him as a guinea pig for a new cloning tech. This drove Ben off the deep end, and he eventually turned the tables on Warren, becoming the new Jackal. Ben, now as the Jackal, started new U technologies with the aim to use cloning for good. But his plan backfired and Spider-Man had to intervene. Chasing redemption but still a bit unhinged, Ben donned the Scarlet Spider suit again. There, he clashed with Kane, another Scarlet Spider clone. After being killed and resurrected yet again, Ben teamed up with Madeline Pryor, the clone of Jean Grey and the Queen of Limbo, a magical dimension of demons, and hatched a plan to nab Jean and Peter's memories. But they were caught in the plan and Ben ended up locked up in a new limbo embassy by the new reformed Queen Bee. Ben Riley, Spider-Man's clone, packs the same spider-powered skill sets. He has superhuman strength and can leap over buildings which no mortal can dream of. 
His stamina is immeasurable and can exert himself to the maximum capacity before fatigue can impair his performance. Ben can outrun the fastest humans, even keeping pace with speeding cars, though he usually prefers swinging around town on his web. His body's built tough, more durable and resilient, and if he does get injured, he regenerates way faster than an ordinary human. But that's not it. Ben's super agile, and his reflexes are lightning fast, dodging danger and making him a tough target to hit. And how can one forget the reliable spidey sense that warns him of potential immediate danger before it can even touch Ben? Evan Sabiner, Kid Apocalypse Evan Sabiner, better known as Kid Apocalypse, adds variety and freshness to the whole roster of clones in the Marvel Universe. He's a reboot of the legendary Apocalypse, known for his comebacks from the dead. In one such instance, he was resurrected as a kid with zero memory and a clean slate. Phantomix, a product of a mating between his human mother and a machine, kills the young Apocalypse but manages to obtain a blood sample from his body to create a brand new and improved clone of Apocalypse. Phantomix tries to raise this clone as a morally righteous and upright person, standing opposite of everything Apocalypse stood for, and he ultimately proves his fearless and valiant nature and sacrifices his life in a battle against the villain Omega Red, a Russian mutant. However, Kid Apocalypse is definitely not in a slump in the area of superpowers. He can morph his body, turning limbs into weapons or rocket boots on a whim, and can even become large or stretchy. He can heal himself and adapt to whatever sticky situation he finds himself in, whether it's a disease or a harsh environment. Evan can even blast energy beams from his eyes and hands. Mania Symbiote The Mania Symbiote, a spin-off from Venom's own, was born out of a piece of Venom's tongue and created by the Ararat Corporation. The brain behind it, Bob, was on a wild mission to find Venom and merge the clone with it and to exterminate the Earth and its inhabitants. But this clone was a disaster. It left chaos in its wake and attached itself to Patricia Robertson, which turned her into the second She-Venom. Eventually, Patricia was able to control it and aimed to take down the original Venom. When it finally met Venom, they merged and made him stronger than ever. Later, Flesh Thompson bonded with Venom to become Agent Venom. While Flash was acting as a substitute teacher, Jack O'Lantern, a supervillain, tried to kill one of his students, Andy Benton. In a rush, Flash accidentally bonded Andy and the Mania symbiote, unaware of its true self. The Mania symbiote carried a demonic mark from Venom, which it passed on to Andy. She started off as a crime fighter but eventually began turning violent and ruthless, influenced by the symbiote. Flash eventually returned from space to rescue Andy with an elixir, giving her a brief respite from her inner turmoil. Later, Lee Price, ex-Army Ranger, snatched the Mania symbiote from Andy and rebranded himself as Maniac, adding another chapter to the symbiote saga. Since Mania is the Venom symbiote's clone, it also has all Venom's signature moves. She's got superhuman strength that lets her lift and toss stuff into thin air. She can withstand blows that would knock others off their feet. Her stamina is through the roof and is tough like nails. Speed, agility, and reflexes make her quick and nimble in any face-off. She can also heal quicker than an average human, and wall crawling is just another trick up her sleeve. Up fast. Thus, Mania is loaded with all of Venom's abilities, making her one tough character to beat. Red Skull Post Avengers vs. X-Men Johann Schmidt, aka Red Skull, woke up to a world of chaos and mayhem. Convinced with his view that the mutants were a big threat, he rounded up a crew, the S-Men, to tackle them. Pulling a gutsy move, he snatched Professor X's brain to boost his own telepathic powers. He even captured Scarlet Witch to turn her powers against the mutants. At his school for gifted humans, the X-Man Rogue tried to pull the plug on his plans but got psychically shut down by Red Skull, along with the Scarlet Witch, and were forced to join Red Skull's anti-mutant crusade. Red Skull then hit New York with his mind powers to turn people against each other, leading to the Red Riot. This ensured a face-off with the Avengers Unity Division, Steve Rogers, aka Captain America's team, who aimed to unite humans, mutants, and inhumans. In a heroic effort, the Avengers united their individual strength and abilities, forcing the Red Skull to accept defeat, putting an end to his nefarious plan, and saving countless innocent lives. Later, Beast 
and X-Men performed brain surgery to remove Xavier's brain from Red Skull, and S.H.I.E.L.D. took him. But Red Skull wasn't done yet. He created a Nazi version of Steve Rogers, who eventually overthrew Red Skull's Hydra, which led to the clone's death. Before all the brain swap, Red Skull was a top-notch hand-to-hand fighter, a Spencer and marksman. Post-surgery, though, he lost all those telepathic powers. The Stepford Cuckoos The Stepford Cuckoos are more than just Emma Frost lookalikes with powerful telepathy. As revealed in X-Men Phoenix Warsong, they were actually part of a massive clone project using Emma's DNA. These orphan sisters, Sophie, Phoebe, Mindy, Celeste, and Esme, joined the Xavier Institute crew. They got the name the Stepford Cuckoos, but preferred to be called the Five-in-One. Emma Frost saw something special in them and took them under her wing. Among the sisters, Sophie was the standout early on, always aiming to be the hero, while Phoebe turned a bit edgy and craved its power, especially when the Phoenix Force came to possess it. After Sophie's death, Phoebe took the lead. Mindy resigned to being a pawn. Celeste was initially the most timid and affectionate of the Cuckoos and was not too eager to wield the Phoenix power. Esme was the most cunning and a schemer among her sisters. Esme's path took a darker turn when she used Kick, an addictive aerosol, to overdose Sophie. Later, she joined Zorn, a mutant new brotherhood. The Cuckoos share a hive mind, stronger when they are together, which makes them master telepaths. They can read minds, create illusions, tweak memories, project thought, and block other telepaths as well. They can paralyze folks mentally or physically, erase memories, or bring them back from the dead. And like Emma, they can turn into diamonds, tough, translucent, and flawless. In this form, they are a step ahead of Emma and are basically untouchable. Itsy Bitsy Itsy Bitsy Disillusioned with life and feeling like she couldn't make a dent in the world, turned to drugs to deal with her bleak outlook. Her world flipped when she met Patient Zero, who was dead set to take revenge against Deadpool and Spider-Man. She volunteered to be his lab rat and got injected with a mix of Deadpool's and Spider-Man's DNA, which totally changed her. Named Susan Mary post-experiment, the combination sent her off the rails, and she started going on a killing spree in honor of her biological fathers forcing the unlikely duo to join forces against her. Singing Itsy Bitsy Spider while taking out bad guys, she earned the nickname by Spider-Man. But she wasn't on board with Patient Zero's plan to kill Spider-Man and Deadpool. After killing Patient Zero, Itsy Bitsy tried to get Spider-Man and Deadpool on her side, but they weren't having any of her violent and extreme ways. Her relentless killing spree in their names almost pushed Spider-Man to break his no-kill rule. Deadpool eventually took things into his own hands and decided to end her with a plasma breeder. The amalgamation of Deadpool and Spider-Man's potential, however, gave Itsy Bitsy Spider some insane abilities. She could stick to walls, had super agility, and could dodge bullets. Her organic webbing was sharp enough to cut through anything, and she even outmaneuvered Spider-Man. Her healing factor was even better than Deadpool's, allowing her to regenerate from major injuries and even coming back from being atomized. Plus, she had this corrosive spit that could melt clothes. Itsy Bitsy was a twisted blend of two of Marvel's iconic characters, though completely unhinged. Bruce Banner Clone Nerd Hulk was a twist on a classic Hulk, and a clone created by Tony Stark's older brother Gregory, who used Banner's stem cells. This Hulk's got Banner's brain and Hulk's muscle, but lacked the rage that makes Hulk. This made him an easy target for Captain America, who took him down without much hassle. Nerd Hulk was scared stiff when facing a cosmic cube powered by Red Skull. However, Monica Kang, aka Black Widow, urged him to go head-to-head -head with Red Skull, and for a moment, it seemed like he crushed the cosmic cube. But Red Skull had tricked him with an illusion, and then sent him flying off into the sky. Nerd Hulk ended up burning up and was eventually decapitated by Captain America. If talking powers, Nerd Hulk had the same skill set. Stress and anger triggered his Hulk transformation. He's super strong, can breathe underwater, zip around with impressive speed, and has high resistance to injuries and sickness. His stamina is first rate, and he can patch himself super fast, way beyond what any normal human can do. Now, you can compare this version to Avengers Endgame's Professor Hulk, who not only lacks the rage, but is a total science geek, makes snacks for his fellow Avengers, takes selfies with his fans, and is just the adorable giant monster everyone loves.
Strife. Strife was the clone of Nathan Summers, the son of the X-Men Cyclops, and the Goblin Queen Madeline Pryor, who was Jean Grey's clone. He had a rocky start when Apocalypse nabbed him, thinking him to be the original infant Nathan, who was infected with a lethal virus, but actually snatched Strife. Apocalypse decides to raise the kid and wanted to use Strife's body as a future vessel. He named the clone Strife and fueled his arrogance and mean streak. Grown up, Strife caused chaos as an X-Men villain when unleashing the legacy virus that that killed many mutants. However, Strife's got the same mutant skills as Cable, with outstanding telepathy and telekinesis. He can concoct convincing telepathic illusions, mess with people's heads, control their physical actions, and even wipe or change their memories. For defense, Strife can create psychic shields for himself as well as others. On the physical side, due to Apocalypse's genetic tinkering, he had superhuman strength, speed, agility, and durability, and was more resistant to certain types of injury than the body of a normal human. In short, Strife's blend of mental might and physical prowess makes him a notorious villain in the X-Men world. Gabriel Kinney aka Honey Badger or Scout, is Wolverine's daughter, Lore's clone but with a twist. Unlike Logan and Laura, she had these nanites in her system that nixed any pain that her body could feel, so she could take a hit and heal without even flinching. But things took a drastic turn for Gabriel, when during a clash with Carnage, Venom, her nanites stopped working like they used to. Now every time she pops her claws or gets a scratch, she feels it all. Gabriel is in a new world of hurt. She feels every cut and and bruise, something totally new for her. And this also affects her regeneration abilities as well. But Gabriel got to learn to feel pain. She's got to adapt, just like every other hero in a world where power and tech are scarce. Despite this, being Wolverine's clone, Gabriel still got all the classic abilities, rapid healing, plus enhanced strength, speed, agility, and reflexes. She's got two bone claws in each arm, ready to pop out, sharp enough to cut through most stuff. But life without those pain-blocking nanites is a whole new ballgame for her. Before, Gabriel was pain-proof due to her nanite, but now, every move brings a new sensation of pain. But in a world without power, technology, and electricity, most heroes have had to adapt to the new status quo. Marvelous Verdict All right, so wrapping up on Marvel's 10 Most Dangerous Clones from Marvel Comics, these clones are far from carbon copies and bring their own unique flair to the table. Take the Stepford Cuckoos, Emma Frost's psychic clone squad with a hive mind, or Strife, a clone of Nathan Summers who's got the whole telepathic and telekinetic package, plus some extra muscle. Then there's Gabriel Kinney, aka Honey Badger. She's a Wolverine clone who used to not feel a thing but can feel every hit. Each one's got their own brand, which makes them way more important than just duplicates. These clones shake things up in the Marvel Universe. They've got similar powers to their originals, but with crazy abilities and backstories that make them unique and a whole new character in their own right. From battling heroes to causing chaos, they've definitely left their mark and done it all. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks, everyone.